Hello, church family, people of God. It is so good to be with you through this digital technology. Welcome to a, the live stream of our Wednesday Lenten service. Uh, there are many different ways to, to live stream a service, and over the next few weeks, we'll probably try some different things, some ways to make it look more like normal, which we're doing tonight, or some ways to make it more interactive. Uh, but today we're going to make it feel and look like a normal Wednesday Lenten service. And there's just a handful, a less than a handful, just a few of us from the ministry team that are here. So you will hear us singing. We invite you to sing along. The order of worship that we are using uh, has been emailed out to our members. We also posted it on Facebook late this morning. And uh, so you can find it there. It's also on our website, bslchurch.com, bslchurch.com. Then click on Info Center, then Weekly Bulletin, then Today's Date. Uh, we're continuing our sermon series, Words of Life from the Cross. And these, this is a look at the, the statements that Jesus made from the cross while he was being crucified. We've already studied, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then Jesus' words, today you will be with me in paradise. Then we heard him have great compassion on his mother and John the disciple, and he said, woman, behold your son, son be, uh, John, behold your mother. Today's cross, uh, word, uh, word from the cross is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our opening hymn is hymn 437 in Lutheran service book, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Feel welcome to sing along with us. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from sending disaster. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 8 and 14 through 19. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And from Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 through 49. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered unto death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, he was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. As part of our Lenten meditation, we now review, confess, and pray the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. 
you shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now sing the sermon hymn, Jesus in Your Dying Woes. This is Lutheran Service Book, hymn number 447. We'll sing stanzas 10 through 12. I set the sermon series weeks ago knowing that this topic tonight is one we usually have on Good Friday, and I wondered if it would actually work well this early in Lent. And now that we are here, it seems perfectly fitting, because many people right now are feeling forsaken. Forsaken is a terribly sad word. And we all, to some extent, know what it feels like to be forsaken. I think it starts when we're toddlers, when another kid says that he's not our friend. It becomes harder when you're picked last for kickball. Loneliness sets in when you feel ostracized by peers, co-workers, friends, or by a community you'd like to be a part of. Then there's messy breakups, falling out with friends, painful divorce, being disowned by, by a parent or by a child, rejected, discarded, forsaken. We know how painful it is to be rejected by humans, how much more dreadful it is to feel rejected by God. 
In my time as a pastor, I've heard it many times. Why is God punishing me? Why is it one thing after another? Why do I have to struggle endlessly to try and have enough money to make ends meet? Why is this another illness, another hardship that I am facing? Why do I have even more and more hurt when I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm asking God to just make it go away? Why? Why this? Why now? Why another thing? I've been rejected, discarded, forsaken by God. And now we can add the pandemic to our list. Our hearts break of other nations being brought to their knees and crying out in grief and calling out their warning. And our hearts quake at the thought of it here, coming to our own county, our own town or neighborhood, or even to our own home. The isolation is oppressive. The fear is stifling. The anxiety, the waning, the sense of foreboding. Why? Why, God? Are we rejected? Are we discarded? Are we forsaken by you? King David felt forsaken. That's why he penned the lyrics to a sad, sad song that we call Psalm 22. He poured all of his agony into it, and then God the Holy Spirit did something even more. God made it into a prophecy, a prophecy with a hopeful promise. They may not have been able to see it in Old Testament times, but now we read Psalm 22, and it just jumps off the page as plain as can be to be a description of the crucifixion. How can it not be so? The mocking, the dividing of the garments, crying out the same thing as the people taunting Jesus. Let God deliver him if he delights in him. Then there's the pierced hands and feet, the, the dry mouth of a man completely poured out. How could it not be the crucifixion of the Messiah? And Jesus knew it as it was happening. That's why he quotes and begins to pray Psalm 22 from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He cries out these words not because he doesn't understand what's happening, but because he does. He cries out these words in extreme agony because he is living them out. And he cries them out also so that we would indeed know he is the Messiah who is giving himself for us. Rejected, discarded, forsaken by the Father. Oh, the torment. Why would the Father do this? Why would the Son willingly endure it? Friends, it is so that you would know and forever believe that it is true, God has not forsaken you. It is so that you would know and ever believe that it is true that God will never forsake you. For you are God's own precious child. You, baptized believer, you are a son, you are a daughter of the Father who is no longer angry over sin, no longer disappointed with your failure, no longer justly desiring to punish your evil. No longer. Now, our holy God cannot tolerate evil. And that's why the Father forsakes Jesus, who hangs on the cross in the place of every single sinner. When the Father abandons him to the torments of hell, the Father is forsaking the idolater. The Father forsakes the adulterer and the murderer and the slanderer and the coveter. The Father forsakes the Son. Not because Jesus was any of those things by nature, but because he willingly took on our nature. He became sin for us and endured the punishment of our sins for us 
All the sins. All the sins that we despise and hate about ourselves and all the sins that we enjoy. All the sins that we know and all the sins we're unaware of. The sins of every believer and the sins of every rejecter. All of them. There is not one single sin that is not heaped upon that worm writhing on the cross. And that's where we see the unfathomable, unfathomable depths of God's love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Love. A plan to save. That's why Jesus, the Son, was willing to suffer crucifixion, hell, and even death on the cross. And friends, I don't, I don't mean to make light of a pandemic because surely the health and the economic repercussions are huge. But that was a far, far bigger rescue that God has already produced for us than any kind of rescue we're crying out for from our present afflictions. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross will help you to face this broken life and this world of sin and death with confidence, knowing that God's mercies are indeed new every morning as he has promised. God is faithful to all of his promises. Just look at how he fulfilled the prophecy of Psalm 22. You can know that Jesus' promise is sure when he says, I am with you always, always, even to the very end of the age. Notice that Jesus doesn't say, I am with you until you lose your job or you have some financial hardship. I am with you until there's a virus. I'm with you until you have some other hardship or sorrow in your life, and then I'm out. No. I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. God promises never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And dear friends, you will see that it, it is true. If you don't see it already, you will see in time that it is true. He is with you. He will be with you, even as he has always been with you. So repent of sin, Cast your cares upon the Lord and know that he does not despise the cries of his lowly people. He hears and he answers with great affection for us and answers with great power for us. He brought Psalm 22 to fulfillment and he is still bringing it to fulfillment, especially the end of that psalm. Now, we didn't read the end of that psalm yet, not in our worship today. So listen to a portion of the end of that psalm now. And picture this. Jesus is talking to the Father and talking to brothers and sisters, the congregation of his people. Here are portions of the end of Psalm 22. I will tell of your name to the brothers in the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. And all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Posterity shall serve him, it shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Friends, God has done it. 
in Jesus for you. And God is doing it right here and right now. You are not forsaken, but you are beloved, adopted, married, blessed, welcomed, and whole in Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now sing Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted, which is hymn 451 in Lutheran Service Book. service when we would normally give our offerings to the Lord, uh, it is important for those of us who are able to continue to support ministry and help our neighbors. Uh, we understand that there is going to be an economic impact from all of this, and some people may be feeling that already, but for those of us who are able, uh, the ministry continues. Um, so, and many of you who are watching, or at least some of you, might not be members of our congregation, so it's important for you to support your own church, your own congregation. Consider mailing in a check, or using your bank's online bill pay service, or if you're a member of Beautiful Savior, you can check in with our office about an automatic deduction uh, system called Joyful Response. In addition to that, you will have neighbors who are in need. We're hearing that Lee Summit Social Services is asking for food donations, so you can take food directly there, or if you, you need help with that, you can bring groceries here and we'll make sure it gets delivered there. Also, cold water in Lee Summit and Hillcrest Transitional Housing in Lee Summit 
are looking for donations at this time. Additionally, here at Beautiful Savior, we're going to have a trailer in our parking lot from March 21st through March 29th. This is for a clothing and shoe donation drive. Um, it does help our youth here at Beautiful Savior in their trips, but it's also a way to, to help our neighbors. And so you can look, watch for that trailer and we'll have a specific drop-off location marked for you to bring those by. Thank you and, and uh, God bless you as you continue to support ministry and help your neighbors with the love of Christ. Let us now pray to the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry, <clears throat> for the hungry and homeless, for the unemployed, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Claire Cuttis' grandson, Aaron, who is in the ICU with the flu, that the medical teams would be able to strengthen him and grant him a recovery. For Rodney Lewis, who is now recovering at home from a stroke, that he would continue to improve and trust in the Lord through this trying time. For Johnny Stewart, who is undergoing radiation treatment, that the Lord would work healing in her life and strengthen her for this affliction. For Donna Lewis in her ongoing recovery, that she would be greatly strengthened and encouraged as she also is a witness to many sharing her faith. For John Pfeffer and family as he mourns the loss of his father, that they, that they would be comforted by the good news of Jesus Christ who has conquered death. And for this pandemic that is upon us, that all who mourn would be comforted, that all who are sick would be cared for and encouraged with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that all those who are working to treat the sick would be kept in safety and granted success, that all those working to prevent the spread of the illness would also have success in their work. For all those impacted by the economic repercussions, that they would trust in you, wait upon the Lord, and know that he is able to provide all that we need for this body and life, even as he feeds the birds and clothes the lilies of the field. For these and all other things that are weighing on our hearts and on our minds, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, 
through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn, hymn 423 in Lutheran service book, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. Thank you. 